In chemistry, there are several formulas that are percentages. You will either be asked to find the percentage or you will be given the percentage and asked to find an original amount. Let's review how to change a decimal to a percentage and the opposite, how to change a percentage to a decimal. To change a decimal into a percentage, you multiply by 100. Instead of using a calculator to do this, we could just move the decimal to the right two times. When multiplying by 100, you move the decimal to the right. And since there are two zeros in 100, this is why we move the decimal two times. To change a percentage into a decimal, you divide by 100. Again, instead of using a calculator to do this, we could just move the decimal to the left two times. Recall that if a number doesn't have a decimal that is shown, it is always found at the very end of the number. When dividing by 100, you move the decimal to the left, and since there are two zeros in 100, this is why we move the decimal two times. Let's start with an example that goes from a decimal to a percentage. The topic you'll need to know this for is percent composition by mass, which is also referred to as mass percent. This is our formula. The mass of the element is on top and it's divided by the total mass of the compound. This is all multiplied by 100 to get our percent composition by mass. In this example, we are asked to find the percent composition by mass of copper and copper two bromide. Step one is to find the total mass of the element. Using our periodic table, we'll find the mass of copper. Copper's mass is 63.55 grams. This goes on top. Step two is to find the total mass of the compound. To do this, we need to find the mass of each individual element and add them together. So let's find the mass of copper and bromine using our periodic table. Copper's mass we said was 63.55 grams and bromine's mass is 79.9 grams. Since there is a two subscript in the compound, we must multiply the mass of bromine by two to get this. Next, we'll add these two numbers together to get the total mass of the compound. This goes on the bottom. Step three is to divide, then multiply by 100 to get our present composition of copper. Not too bad, right? Let's change things up a bit and go from a percentage to a decimal now. This example states if copper to fluoride contains 37.42% of fluorine by mass and the mass of the compound is 55.50 grams, what is the mass of fluorine? We already are given the percent by mass of fluorine and the total mass of the compound. The only thing left to find is the mass of fluorine. Start with plugging everything we know into the percent composition formula. Since we don't know the grams of fluorine, we can place an X there since this is what we are looking for. The next step is to get rid of this percentage and change it back to its decimal form by dividing 100 to both sides. Now we can get rid of this denominator since we want to get X by itself. So we will multiply both sides by 55.50. These now cancel and X is equal to 20.77, which means the mass of fluorine is 20.77 grams. Another chemistry topic where you will use percentages is when finding the percent yield of a reaction. You will find the percent yield a lot, especially for your lab report, so get familiar with this formula. The formula for percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield, all multiplied by 100. An easy way to remember this formula is knowing that percent yield is where it's at. Dorky, yes, will you forget it now? Probably not. This question states, if 29.8 grams of tin 4 carbonate are actually formed and the theoretical yield is 35 grams, what is the percent yield? Start with identifying what you are given. We are given both the actual yield and theoretical yield. A key word here was the word actually. This is hinting at this being our actual yield. Now, just like with our percent composition by mass formula, we just have to plug it into the formula and multiply by 100 to get our percent yield, which has two sig figs since our lowest number of sig figs is two in this question. These types of questions aren't too bad. Where students get confused is when they are given the percent yield and asked to find either the actual or theoretical yield. So let's go over this. If the percent yield is 75% and the theoretical yield is 8.19 grams, what is the actual yield? Start with plugging in what you know. 
we are given the percent yield and the theoretical yield and asked to find the actual yield, so we will place an x here and solve for x. Next, we'll convert the percentage into its decimal form by dividing both sides by 100. To get x by itself, we must multiply both sides by the denominator. This now cancels, and we will round our answer to three sig figs since our lowest number of sig figs is three in this question. So our actual yield is 6.14 grams. It's also important to know how to write a percentage as a fraction. This will be used often in chemistry. These percentages are like hidden conversion factors that allow us to convert from one unit to a different unit. To write a percentage as a fraction, we would place the number given as our numerator divided by 100. For chemistry purposes only, there is no need to simplify since this will be used as a conversion factor. Also, for chemistry purposes, if a percentage already has a decimal in it, we would still write this the same way. We see this need to write percentages as fractions when we talk about solutions, specifically solution stoichiometry. In this question, we are given the mass percent of a solution. The mass percent of a solution is a little bit different than the mass percent of a compound. There's more to the formula. For the mass percent of a solution, you need to know what a solute and solvent are. Let's say we wanted to make sweet tea. So we have two different things in this class. We have the sugar with the tea. A solute is whatever is being dissolved, so the sugar in this case, and the solvent is whatever is doing the dissolving, so the tea. The solution is the solute plus the solvent, so this entire sweet tea is the solution. Now that you understand this, we can rewrite the mass percent of the solution into a fraction. The 13 would be on top, and it represents the grams of our solute in a 100 gram solution. This fraction will act as our conversion factor since it allows us to go from the grams of the solute to the grams of the solution. We are asked to find the volume in milliliters of the solution, and we are given the mass percent of the solution and the grams of our solute, which is sugar. The density will also be used as a conversion factor, where the grams are specifically the grams of the solution, and the milliliters are the milliliters of the solution. We'll start with the grams of sugar. Next, we'll use the conversion factor that has the same units, which is the mass percent since we have grams of sugar here. Note that we are allowed to flip conversion factors. The point of this is to cancel out your previous unit and get to a different unit. So we will place the 13 grams of solute on the bottom and 100 grams of solution on top. Next, we need to cancel out the grams of solution, so the only conversion factor that is left and that has the same units of grams of solution is the density of our solution. Place the grams of solution on the bottom and the one milliliters of solution on top. Our grams of the solution cancel and we get our desired unit, which is the milliliters of the solution. To avoid calculator mistakes, I recommend multiplying the top and bottom separately and then divide to get our answer, which is rounded to the least amount of sig figs, which was two. It's your turn to test what you just learned by heading over to melissa.help practice. There you can try out all the practice problems for this topic and check your answers with my step-by-step -step video answers. Once you do this, come right back to watch the next video in this playlist.